<laughs> God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things. Look. For the benefit of the church. Look, that's the benefit of our church. Look. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. Now, what's Christ? The Word. Mm -hmm. When you have a question, the answer is in the owner's manual. Mm -hmm. When people bring you to the world for answers, they're not using Christ. Mm -hmm. They're using the world, which is a counterfeit of this. Mm -hmm. The world is building a solution without Christ. Mm -hmm. It's a Christless world. That's what Antichrist is. We have another solution. You don't need this one. We have a worldly solution. And guess who that's from? Satan. Satan. And there's Christians that bite on Satan's worldly solutions instead of God's. Because this is too hard. <laughs> now you know why spiritual maturity solves the problem. <laughs> Understanding the power of God that you possess gives you the power to do it. Sorry. Romans 8. Look at verse 11. Back to Romans 8. These are all scriptures. I have. Look, highlight them. Use them. Now, this one, when I read this one in verse 11 of Romans 8, I'm saying, wow, I didn't really catch this till after. <coughs> Bless you. Now look what it says. Verse 11. The Spirit of God, who raised Jesus from the dead, lives in you. Okay, He lives in me. As a believer, He lives in me. Do I feel that? Not always. Sometimes I do sense it. Because God is good. He always gives us a little taste. Look what it says. And just as God raised Christ from the dead, remember Jesus? He was dead, right? But when he came back, he still had a physical body. He had both now. He was able to do both. He was able to cross realms. But look what it says. Who raised Christ will give life to your mortal bodies. He's saying, I'm born again, and he's giving me a new life in this body, mortal body, right now. Amen. See it? He gives life to your mortal body. You are born spiritually dead, not physically, spiritually. He gives life to your mortal body, this life. You have the life of God in you now, in your mortal body. See it? Amen. Why? By the same spirit living within you. You realize as this... This body is getting renewed by the Spirit. But it's giving life to our mortal body. So when we go out there, we're resurrected like, like Jesus was. That's what it's trying to say. John is dead. I am now living for Christ. The problem is, Christians live for themselves and think that God's going to give them an enjoyable life down here. It's when you live for Him is when you start enjoying life. Knowing that it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Being a taker never brings enjoyment. It always brings what? Selfishness and greed. I want more, more, more. Yeah, I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll take it. Instead of saying, what can I give of myself to God? Because he sacrificed himself for me. This is where life really is. Not trying to store up everything down here for yourself. How's that working? How's that working? Let me tell you one thing. Learning myself. You can't outgive give God. You can't outgive give God. He's the one who gave you everything, so you can give it. He's, he's given you, if he's given you a little, he wants you to use what little you have to help him mm -hmm. and to help others. Mm -hmm. He's given you a lot, he wants you to give you a lot of what you have to help others. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter how much, it's, it's what you put it in, what you use it for. Mm -hmm. Remember that lady? She just had a penny. It's all she had left. Mm -hmm. And she gave it to God. That meant more than somebody putting a thousand dollars in there that had a hundred million. Yep. Mm -hmm. So God's been, listen, I, I, don't, I, I don't even know. 
I'm starting to understand that kind of power that I have. So people think it's like, like that witchcraft power. Ooh, I'm gonna move that stand. <laughs> Wait, it's coming. <laughs> it's not that kind of power. It's resurrection power. And it's gonna what? Give you an advantage over your sin nature. Amen. Yeah. That's the power it's talking about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to wake up tomorrow and I'm going to be just like Jesus. <laughs> Don't you wish it was that easy? <laughs> All right. Last one because we're going to have to close. Jeremiah 29. See, here's the thing. We have a lot of plans, right? But God has a plan too. See? So you have to understand, whatever, whatever you're going through in life, whatever season you're going through, God knows. Listen. Listen to me. God knows what you're all going through, and God has a plan for each and every one of you. Amen. Amen. Don't you ever doubt that. He promised he'd never leave us nor forsake us, and he's with us every step of the way. He's going to take us through the fire, through the water, all through it. Look. For I know, look what it says, Jeremiah, the prophet. For, for uh, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans of good and not for disaster. So, God has a plan for you, and so do you have a plan for you. The problem is, we want God's plan, but we also want to fit our plan into it too. And it won't work. No, you have to what? Get rid of your plans and go to God's plan. Mm -hmm. That's where the power comes in. Look what it says. And plans for good and not for disaster. Do you realize your sin and your sin nature is disastrous? It kills you. Have you not noticed what your sin nature does to you? It hurts you and others. Look, it's it plans for good and not for disaster. Look, serving your sin nature will be disastrous as a Christian. But God has a plan for you to give you what? A future and a hope. A hope what? To be freed from that slavery. To that sinful nature. It's a look, you're in bondage to you. You're a slave to your flesh. That's what he's trying to set you free from. Mm -hmm. Can I get an amen for that? Yeah. Stop trying to think that everything else is the problem and look at what the really problem is. It's your sin nature. Mm -hmm. Your sin nature is the problem that holds you into bondage from living the freedom and enjoying the Christian life. Amen. Well, I got more to say about this. We got more promises. We're going to have to stop there. Brittany's going to come up and sing, and we're going to close. Thank you. Thanks, John. Thank you. Thank you, John.